Good afternoon. This is Kate from Maynard Costerison. Welcome to another third party Tuesday today instead of third party th Thursday. But we are excited to have you joining us today for some AP automation. And Casey Dial, who I've worked with quite a few times, is going to take over the presentation today. So and I also want to direct you to if you want to ask some questions throughout the presentation on the lower right hand side of your panel, please feel free to type in questions there and Casey and the use team will be able to answer those. So Casey, take it from here. Thank you so much, Kate, and it's a pleasure being here today. Um, as Kate said, you know, we're just going to do some introductions um, and then after introductions, we're going to get right into about use rolling into a product demonstration because I know that's what y'all really came here for. And then after that, we can take those next steps, talk about questions you may have and go from there. So my name is Casey Dial. I am the Regional Sales Director here at USE and uh, we will just jump right in and get started because I know we have an hour allotted and I want to make sure to give you guys the most amount of time to ask questions as possible. So about USE, we were actually born in the cloud in 2010 but we came from our parent company, ITSoft, who has 30 plus years of data extraction, um, workflow optimization, as well as data analytic experience. They spun off into the clouds, so that way we can bring enterprise technology to the small to mid-sized market while still supporting enterprise through cloud. We've expanded since then, of course. We have over 120 employees, over 3,500 global clients, processing millions of documents through our system. And we've actually connected to over 300 different ERPs. Now with the intact integration is API or direct connection. So we'll uh, focus on that a bit more as we get into the process here. But here at USE, we are passion, passionate about um, growth and innovation and a quarter of our revenue is actually reinvested back into research and development alongside of client feedback. So that way we're continuously progressing our solution to stay top of the scale from competitive standpoint while keeping the user interface as friendly as possible. Now we are uh, major award winners. Um, I know our marketing team loves to pitch that we're the most award winning uh, AP automation company out there. And uh, I think that's just a great success of our clients, not of use. So the more we get out there, the more people we serve, the more rewards that we're earning there. It, talking about clients, here is a few of our clients just to throw up. Um, you know, we have every kind of vertical you can think of covered. Um, and all of them have one thing in common, and that is they have to process AP. So we have giant companies like EY, KPMG, PwC to do 30, 40, 50,000 invoices a month, all the way down to a small Terrapin beer company that does about 100 invoices a month. Doesn't matter the size of the organization, those particular pain points of manual processes are still there. So in speaking about those manual processes, why do people start looking into AP automation? Well, really, it's just time and cost. Um, Ardent Partners did a study about AP. Manual processes can cost up to $15 an invoice, which is out astronomical. <laughs> and then it can take up to 28.5 days to process that invoice from beginning to end throughout your organization. So if you're at a net 30 term with your vendors, you can see you're right up against um, serving into those late payments. Now, where's that time going? Well. 41% of the time is just spent handling supplier calls, trying to figure out where invoices are at, you know, uh, within your organization, uh, rummaging through file cabinets, running around the corner to Joe to see if Joe's approved an invoice, and then of course returning the call of the supplier. This leads to late payments um, that can have hefty dis uh, penalties, as well as just mistaken or duplicate payments. We've heard time and time stories of just paper trails that get lost, shuffled around our desk, and then another invoice gets sent throughout the organization, later to find that one that got lost and then a duplicate payment accidentally happens. Or I'm sure you've run into it sometimes where uh, emails that are getting passed around the organization for approval are accidentally deleted and then the process has to start all over again after you figured out that you guys can't find it anymore. Just this is overall just due to a lack of visibility into a centralized solution so that way you have real time data on exactly where invoices are sitting, what's still left to allocate and process into the ERP. Of course, the end goal of automation is to drive down that cost as well as 
uh, response times. So as you can see, it drops it down to 311 and down to six days, which is um, about an 80% time and cost savings, which a lot of our clients are looking into, especially now in the times that we're in. So why do people choose use? Well, it's really because no one does what we do. We stand on these four pillars and we see some individuals out there that may have one of these pillars or maybe even up to three, but we've never seen all four in one. Let's start with that smart technology. Once you feed an invoice image into the use application, it's gonna read it from top to bottom and extract every single piece of text data and archive it. From that archive, our algorithms scrub to identify and bring in key information like invoice number, invoice date, um, PO number, amounts, etc. And all that's actually done within 20 to 30 seconds purely from a software-driven algorithm. That's a far cry from our competition out there that could take two to three hours to process a document, or if they're outsourcing that information offshore, it could take two to three days just to return that invoice information back to you, putting your company already two to three days behind in processing that payable. Now, from a bells and whistles standpoint from power, we give you the full kit and caboodle right out of the gate. We are not a company that tries to get you in the door with some stripped down solution and then nickel and dime you as you grow and need more uh, features and functionality. That's just not the way we do business. This is a partnership and we hold true to that partnership by giving you full access to the solution. Then from an ease of use standpoint, I don't care how powerful of a tool you have, if nobody can utilize it within your organization, well, then it's useless to you. So we like to have a lot of power under the hood, but make the driving of the system as simple for users as possible. Now, of course, from that automation being in the cloud, you can access use from wherever you're at. You may be um, you know, sitting on vacation on a beach, and you're just having those invoice withdrawals. You're starting to get a little itchy and you're like, man, I just need to log into my system and process a couple so that way I can get through my day. I know that's what everybody thinks about while they're on vacation. But with Use, it's simple, just access via web. You log into your account and off to the race as you go and you can get that fix. So let's talk about that bundled solution and everything that's involved. I'm not going to read through these because that would be really redundant. But you can see we can help from everywhere from the scanning and capturing of documents all the way through to payment automation as well. Now, we're not solely focused on payments. If you like the payment uh, process that you currently have, then we can completely do that um, from wherever you're at. If you would like to do it out of your ERP, continue to do that process. We're not going to force you to change like um, others out there. So let's look at that AP process in the front end of what we're doing. So that way you guys can just gauge on what use uh, is all about. We do have a purchasing module. So if you're, a, if you're an organization looking to put in place requisitions and POs, and you don't quite want to do that out of your ERP, but you're looking for a standalone system, we can support in that. You can submit a requisition that can get approved. From that approval, it's turned into a purchase order that then can be sent out to your vendor. And then you have the option to have receiving. You can receive against that purchase order. And then that's going to fall into the back end of the system and wait that invoice to come through to automatically match, which we'll actually cover here in the demo. Now, if you're not looking for that requisition or PO process, or you're already doing it in your ERP, that's completely fine. You can either just have that module in the back end and wait for your company to continue to expand and use it, or we can actually receive that requisition, uh, excuse me, PO data from your ERP into the use system. So that way we can match it uh, whenever the invoice comes in. Now let's talk about that capturing phase or how invoices get into use. Now we're very, uh, we can do this in a multitude of different ways. If you're still very paper heavy as an organization, you can scan in those invoices. You can scan them in individually, or you can do a bulk upload, which is actually what we'll show in today's uh, demonstration. You can also set up emails. So if you already have a centralized email inbox for your AP, that's great. We'll put an auto forward rule in place so it automatically puts those um, linked invoices or attached invoices directly into the use system and it'll extract all the data while you're sleeping at night. Then there's also the mobile capture. You can take a picture of your smartphone to bring in that invoice. Now, once the invoice image or uh, document is within the solution, that's where use goes to work for you. 
scanning from top to bottom, extracting header fields, doing PO matches on the back end, or even memorizing GL coding habits. Then off of that extraction, it's gonna automatically know what, what workflow or route that you guys have designed for that particular invoice. From there, you can verify information that's been extracted by you. So it can go through a series of approval processes. And then after that final approval, it's gonna be automatically exported to your ERP as a posted invoice. Then from there, you can take care of the payment out of your ERP like you're currently doing. Or if you wanna be introduced to a few of our payment um, automation companies that's seamless within use, then we can have a payment workflow in place as well. After the payment approval has been complete, payment can be sent out and update that posted invoice to a paid invoice with the remittance data. Now at the top of this workflow, you do see a no touch process. In this course, this is the end goal. This is what we call full automation. And this is great for things if you have monthly bills like coffee bills or electricity bills or some kind of utilities where it's going to the same GL every single month and you get tired of just hitting the submit button because it's already complete for you. Well, you can take those vendors in place. You can say, hey, if it's under this dollar amount and all the GL has been memorized, the header field's been extracted, let's just go ahead and push that straight through to the ERP because we don't need anybody actually looking at this particular invoice. Now that gives you a full idea of just the front end of what USE does, but now let's show you what this can accomplish within your organization. We love to show the speed of uh, one of our organizations we help, which is a 20 store group, so 20 different locations. They have two full-time AP, and they process about 4,500 invoices each. And that's users D and E you see there. They also have three part-time uh, AP that help out with the month end closes of the influx of invoices that come in. But all together, they're doing about 15,000 invoices. Now, could you imagine as an individual doing 4,500 invoices a month? To me, that was a little scary in a manual world, but now that we have automation, we can do that. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into the tool itself, because like I said, that's what you guys came here to see. So we're gonna log in as Mario here, and Mario wears a multitude of different hats within our organization, uh, but today he is gonna be a maintenance worker as well as AP. First, we're gonna have him as the maintenance worker, <laughs> but before we get into uh, creating a requisition, let's talk about the homepage here. Off to the left-hand side, you have what's called My Folders, which I, I like to affectionately call a virtual filing cabinet. All documents that are being processed through the use application are stored uh, for up to seven years, and then we just archive them after that. So if you ever need to go back and pull any kind of reports or save a report that you uh, run on a regular basis, you can save that right underneath the company or location folder. From there, we have our center stack, which is my documents, which is your queue or what work you need to do within the use system. And off to the right hand side is everything that's in progress or that you want to keep visibility into. So as a document flows through your queue and you submit it off to that next approval, you're updated right there in that progress tab to see exactly where that invoice sits. Now, if you are a multiple location company, we can have those locations subdivided into different folders. So that way you can have unique workflows set up per location and even memorize geocoding habits per vendor per location because some of your locations may have different coding than others. You can limit user visibility into just locations that they work in, or you can have a bird's eye view like we have here in our demo. Today, we're gonna be drilling into US use demo because we need to create a requisition. Mario's a maintenance worker. He has some down machines and he needs to get some parts for some maintenance. So he's gonna go down here to the bottom left to this purchase requisition tab and click and it pulls up the requisition form. Now Mario knows that he utilizes Granger to order his V-belts. He's gonna go ahead and select his billing address which is here in Dallas and the delivery address here in Dallas. He expects these hopefully by the end of the week, and he's gonna write a quick note that just says need ASAP. Now down below that information, we're gonna have our product list. So if we hit add product here and hit period, it'll pull up a product list for that certain vendor. 
Now, if the product you need is not in this list, then it is, is a free text form as well. And after you free text it the first time, it'll be added to that product catalog in the back end and continue to memorize that particular product. But we know that we need V-belts. So we're gonna click on V-belt and tab out. And you'll notice that the uh, item line has been filled out, including GL information. We need six of these V-belts to fix these machines. So it automatically adds up our total. And we're actually ready to submit this to our manager so that way we can continue on to get our V-belts in. So let's submit. This goes off to Barack Jones, who is our manager. We confirm that out and in the in progress, we can now see that requisition sits with Barack waiting to be approved. So let's go ahead and sign in as Barack so that way we can approve that requisition here. And what you'll notice whenever we bring up Brock's screen is it looks exactly the same as Mario's. We actually do this on purpose. Doesn't matter what kind of user you are, as you're logging into the system itself, it's gonna have that same look and feel, even though your functionality may be a bit different. But that just helps with speed of adoption throughout your organization, as well as just training any new staff coming in. So we can see that requisition here from Granger. We drill into this. And we can see that Mario needs this ASAP. He's ordering six V-belts. Barack says he must be needing to do some maintenance. Let's go ahead and approve this, and it'll go out to our buyer, who is Angela. So let's confirm that out to Angela, and we can see now that this has become a purchase order to Angela that is waiting to send to vendor. Log into Angela here. And again, she's gonna have that same look and feel. She's gonna receive an email notification that she has a purchase order to send out. And those notifications can be sent out instantly or it can be an everyday summary. We'll get into the back end here in a second. So from that Granger purchase order, we can see that the company's logo has now been put onto a page. A purchase order number has been assigned, the order date, all delivery and billing information as well as vendor information, the items information, total cost, and down below is a final approval of who actually approved this. So from here, we can hit the mail button here and it'll email it out directly to that vendor based on the vendor information that's been uploaded to the system and kept up to date from intact every 15 minutes. Or we could print this off and send it via snail mail. Either way is, uh, is very flexible to use. Now, once we send that out, we can confirm sending and now it goes into a receive status. Now, if your company doesn't ha uh, have the means to receive, we can just do blanket POs to so we'll do a two-way match. But with this receive step, we can do a three-way match. So let's go back into Mario. Fast forward about a week, our parts came in <laughs> and we're ready to receive against that particular purchase order. So we're logging in as Mario now. He gets back from lunch. He has some parts sitting on his desk and he says, oh my goodness, they finally came in. I can do my maintenance, but let me first go against this purchase order and receive these. Now, if he only received three V-belts, he could receive three. It'll keep that PO open. And we could even email the vendor directly from here and say, hey, you guys shorted us three parts. But for demo purposes and just time constraints, let's go ahead and receive all just to make sure we received everything and submit this off. And now you'll see that that uh, PO is gone from our uh, queue and in progress, and it's sitting in the back end of the system awaiting an invoice to come through with that purchase order information on it. Now, again, if you're not looking for a requisition and PO process, that's completely fine. You can utilize this just for invoice processing, which is what we're going to get into now. So Mario needs to do, to work, do some work. He's switching hats from maintenance worker. Now he is our AP staff member. <laughs> So let's import in some work for Mario to do. And we're gonna be bringing in a ton of different invoices, all different types of files. So the first one is just a PO uh, uh, image or uh, JPEG, because we can accept anything from PDFs to JPEGs, to XML files, to Excel files, et cetera. We're gonna actually import all these particular informations. One's just a picture from a phone. And this one right here, I'm actually wanting to open up for you so we can show what we're about to bring in here. This is an example of receiving a ton of invoices via mail. And as we're opening up that mail and we're hitting those invoices, we're putting what's called a use stamp 
on the front side of those. That's a physical rubber stamp. It's a QR code that signifies to our system that this is the first page of this invoice. So if you receive in uh, two page, three page, 10 page invoices, you're just gonna stamp the front side of those so that way you can bulk upload them to the system and use knows where to separate those particular invoices at. So this is about 15 different invoices that we're gonna bring into the system all at once. So that way you don't have to scan just individually. You can do a bulk import. Let's go ahead and start bringing in these uh, invoices here. And we're gonna bring all those in to our company, US Use Demo, as payable invoices and add. Now this first alert here is gonna pop up and it's gonna say uh, that we've um, actually imported these files before. Of course, this is my demo environment, so I'm gonna override this, but this is the first step of our duplicate detection. So if a vendor is inquiring to your APM box that a particular invoice, uh, where an invoice is at, and they're using the same file attachment, it's gonna catch it on that front end so that way it doesn't actually input a duplicate. We're gonna go and import these. And you'll see that they load up and drop into our queue. After that last one's done here, we'll back off to the home page and see uh, exactly where we're sitting in the process itself. So now we can see that we have an alert here that these documents are using. This is our just fancy word of saying <laughs> that our uh, algorithms are scrubbing against those uh, images, extracting those header fields, and kicking them down the appropriate workflows that are designed for your system. Now, like mentioned, it takes 20 to 30 seconds per page. So while that's using, we're gonna go ahead and step into the back end of the system and see how things are set up for us. So from our settings tab in organization, this is where you can set up multi-entities, uh, multiple locations, or if you even want to do uh, different departments, you can set up those different parameters here. From there, we can also have unique email addresses. So if you have multiple locations and you want a unique email address per location, so when a vendor sends in an invoice to that particular location, it auto forwards under that location's bucket and follows all the workflow rules and parameters that are designed for it. That's completely fine. Or you can just have it as a top level company. Now from the process or that workflow I keep talking about, that's where our process tab comes in. Now you can set up different workflows for not just payable invoices, but any other kind of documents you need support with. As far as credit notes, 1099s, W2, slip and fall reports, uh, vendor contracts, et cetera. For each of those uh, particular workflows, you have this three-step process. The first one is the entry, or like to, I like to call the review stage, because you're just reviewing information that has been extracted by use. And this can have up to nine people review an invoice prior to um, it going off to the approval stage. The approval stage can have up to nine people review it in a single sequence before it goes off to the payment. You can have up to four people review payment before it's sent out to the ERP or to one of our payment partners for that payment. Now, why you would need 22 people in a single approval string is beyond me, but you have that capability. Now, in saying that, that's just nine approvers within a single sequence. You can have unlimited amount of users within the use uh, system itself. So if you have 25 or 30 different approvers, that's completely fine. Our pricing isn't based off of approvers or location setups um, or any kind of licensing like that. It's actually solely based off the number of documents that are flowing through the application. So if you're a smaller invoice shop, let's say 250 documents a month, but you have over 100 approvers, well, then this will be a great solution for you because you can have all those users within our system and uh, specialized workflows for those different approval sequences. From there, let's talk about alerts. How do people know that they have work to do within the system? Well, like I mentioned, that email notification can be sent out in a summary every single day just to let you know what's still in your queue. It can be instantaneously sent right when something hits somebody's queue. So if you have that approver that just doesn't do too many approvals through the system, you can instantly notify them that they have something to do. Or if you're like Mario and you're uh, the AP, part of the AP department, and you're always in the system anywhere, you can set that to never as well. Now this is great. There are automated reminders. 
So no more chasing down approvers for you guys. Automated reminders are sent out instantaneously based on the number of working days that you guys have set. So it's automatically going to be pinging those stubborn approvers to get things done. And if they're still not getting them done, well, we have built-in escalations. So after a certain amount of reminders, it can escalate past them in order for it not to be a bottleneck, as well as notify management that a particular user is not getting their work done. I know some of you guys are cheering right now. <laughs> and then there's also delegations. If somebody is going on vacation, uh, then they can delegate out their work from a time frame to another individual who can take their particular queue. Once they get back, anything still pending in their queue will be brought back and they can take over. With that, we'll go back to the home page here. And once we go back to the home page, we'll see use did its thing in the background while we were chatting. It separated out all those invoices, began to uh, categorize and send things down appropriated workflows. So off to the right here, we can see that we had some automatically go straight through to an approval set. The reason for this is because we have a workflow in the back end that says if an invoice comes in for under $500, and it's from these certain vendors, and it's what's called fully used, which means all the header fields have been extracted as well as the GL dimensions have been filled. We're gonna send that directly to an approver. Then you'll see some made it all the way through to a payment step because after that straight through process to those approvers, we have another rule that says if it's under $50 and from these certain vendors and it's been fully used, we don't even want approvers to look at it. We want it to go straight through to payment. So that's the power of that automation and setting those different rules in place so that way you can have as much automation as possible. Now here in the middle are things that we need to work on um, as a user that just need a little bit of a touch. So first let's go to this ABC International. As you can tell, we drill into this um, particular invoice and it is just a camera picture of the invoice that was brought into the system. You'll notice that my vendor code over to the left has been extracted. And the reason why that's been extracted already is because if you'll see, I'll start scrolling over words or numbers on the screen. It'll pop up with a little bubble that shows exactly what was extracted. Off of this archive, we use our algorithms to identify keywords as well as key information that's brought in from your vendor file to identify that vendor code. Now, the great thing is that this is not templated based. You're not having to teach the system where to look on this particular invoice to extract this information. It just automatically knows through to that 30 years of OCR and data extraction experience. Now, of course, that AP account has been tied in with that vendor. And here in the invoice date, it will jump down on the page to show you exactly where it was extracted. Now the invoice number is blank here because we'll actually review this invoice and there actually is no invoice number on it whatsoever. So we could just use the order number here as that particular um, invoice input, INV um, after it, so that way we know that it's an invoice. Then of course the um, PO number was ordered, uh, pulled in as part of the order number. The total amount is here. And uh, if you track taxes, we can turn on taxes. If you don't track taxes, we can turn off taxes, completely dependent on your organization. And of course, your default payment method is here as a manual payment, which means that you're gonna process this payment out of your ERP. Of course, you have posting dates. So if you need to back post something, you can do that uh, as well as uh, different information. Now, something to point out here, because I know a lot of uh, AP staff on the phone may be like, well, these particular header fields as well as these GL dimensions don't look quite like my system. Well, this is just our demo environment. These header fields and GL dimensions aren't going to be mapped to that of your ERP. So what dimensions you're used to seeing and header fields you're used to seeing is going to be mapped to that of views, so that way it looks and feels the same. Now, speaking of this GL, we have an account down here that was automatically designated to ABC International. The reason why is because last time ABC International came through USA Use Demo, it was allocated to operating expense one, and that's the only allocated uh, GL it was. So it goes ahead and drops in that amount for us. So if we need to do more research on this, we could pin this and it'll put into a pinning status in our queue. We could forward along to somebody else to take a look at if we're just unsure on something. Uh, you could submit it to the next step, update it to maybe a different location. 
uh, or of course you have the ability to delete if for whatever reason uh, it is a duplicate. But for this invoice, we're gonna submit. That'll process onto its next step, which based on our workflows is gonna go to Barack Jones. And then it automatically pulls up our next invoice in our sequence. Now a note here is that the payable invoice that we uploaded up here in the top left has actually changed automatically over to a PO invoice. The reason for this is because it identified that vendor code and did a scrub against the back end of the system saying, hey, are there any open POs uh, that, have, that need to match against this invoice? And there was. So then it pulled in that PO number, which we can see there. And since it pulled in that PO number, it automatically grabbed that line item information from that purchase order and filled it out for us. So this one is actually already three-way matched because we have the uh, received amount that matches to the invoice quantity. And this one's ready to go to submit. But let's just say for some reason we needed to add a particular comment. Let's just say for any questions about this invoice or account, call this number. We have this great lasso feature where you can just lasso information and it drops it right there into a comment section. In this payment comment, we could even put the FIE number three, six. And I just did that by clicking those three things and it pulls over, which is called our click and recall. So this is a great way just to put in massive amounts of information off the invoice into either a description field down here or into any kind of comment field you see. With that, we'll go ahead and submit and we'll go on to our next invoice here after we send that invoice out to Barack. Next invoice in the sequence is actually a travel and expense report. So this is the way use handles t &Es. We have a dedicated template um, that's Excel. They can fill out uh, that Excel document with uh, their information, and it's gonna actually put that vendor as your employee. And as you can see, it pulls out of our AP account employee. So after they fill out the different information, then they can it totals it out for them, and then come down here and actually enter those totals. So 29, uh, 292, 94, hit enter, 45, enter. And of course, it fills out that last line for us there, as you saw. If it's the first time they're adding this particular account, all they have to do is just hit that keyword and that account will automatically pop up for them. So that way they know where to expense it to. If they need to attach receipts, because the receipts are required, of course, they can hit this attachment button here. They can go to a network source where what I do is I just drop all my receipts into a folder based on my trip date. And I just bring in all those receipts that I need. Once those receipts have been attached, we can submit this off and it'll go to that person's manager for approval. Confirm that out, focus on the next invoice. You see how easy this is just to continue to process these invoices. So we have general petroleum here, AP account tied in, invoice date pulled in. As we tab through again, it's gonna jump down on the invoice on exactly where it found this information. And down below we have three GL, now these three GL are memorized because last time General Petroleum was processed through the use system, it was allocated to these three GL. So for splitting these up, you can have full control over this split. So let's say that we want to take the total amount here and we want to do a three-way split. Well, we can just divide that by a three, hit this arrow, and it'll copy that answer straight down for us. So that way we have a three-way split. But let's say we want to do the line level detail. So actually this first one, we want to do the 2376, 60, and then 12. It's as simple as that to input those allocations. Now in Intact itself, I know there are dynamic allocations. And if you have an allocation uh, dimension that once an allocation has been hit, it automatically splits it on the Intact side, well, we can memorize that particular allocation for a certain vendor. And once it's pushed over to intact, it'll automatically split those out into those allocations. Just a nice little tip. Now, of course, if we need to add a GL, we can add a GL. It pulls over all the GL information from your intact instance or whatever ERP you may be on. And if you type in keyword or a period, it'll start pulling up those different uh, data points. Now, this is kept up to date every 15 minutes within our system. So if you add a GL or tweak any GL information within intact, it's going to feed over to use within 15 minutes. With that, we'll submit on to the next step here. And we uh, will notice that it still goes to Barack here, but this next invoice in the sequence is gonna go to somebody different because of a workflow that we have put in place.
So this flag service invoice, we'll see all the header fields have been extracted for us already. The allocation's been done. But if we submit this, we'll notice it doesn't go to Brock, it actually goes to Hillary. The reason for this is because it's over $5,000 of value and we need a double approval here. So first it's gonna to go to Hillary, then it'll go to Brock based on the workflows that we have designed within the system. Let's confirm out that flag service. And get to our final example here, which is Stokes Electric. Now we'll automatically see a red warning up here in the top left that says that this document is a duplicative document 4266. But let's say for whatever reason we missed that, we're uh, going through, we're reviewing the invoice, we're like, hey, everything looks good, let me go ahead and try to submit this. Well, to recast that warning up at the top. And what this is saying is that this 4266 is a duplicate of the invoice that we're trying to process. If we click on it, it'll pull up that document that's in question, which we can see is Stokes Electric, invoice ending in 1845 for an amount of 406.32. Come back to our doc, Stokes Electric, 1845, 406.32, this is indeed a duplicate doc, and we can delete it out as such. So I like to use this invoice as a stopping point because it's in French and I don't speak French. <laughs> so uh, our system is multilingual and as long as it's alphanumeric, we have a good chance of that extraction. But let's back off to our uh, homepage here and we can see off to the right hand side, Barack has a lot to do within his queue and we have Hillary who has that one um, invoice because of that amount. So let's first go into Hillary's environment to process that one. And if Hillary doesn't want to actually join um, via web into this environment and she needs to approve this invoice, we do have a mobile app as well. So you can get a email notification on your phone. You can log right into our app and you can approve it right there while you're out on the go. It's great for approvers who are always out and about visiting clients, golfing, fishing, whatever they may be doing. But from Hillary's standpoint, let's go ahead and drag, uh, click into this flag service. We see all the header header field lines here. If we go into uh, if we go down below, we see that this is actually going to account 61003, which is operating expense three. For whatever reason, let's just say, ooh, we actually stopped allocating expenses there. This one actually needs to be operating expense two. We can reject this, send it back to Mario, and just put op expense two and confirm that back to Mario. I know that was a pretty generic note, but you get the drift. Now the in progress, we see an alert here that things have been rejected back to Mario, and we'll go back into Mario's environment here in a second to fix that particular document. But Mario is also up to date with that document. Now, Brock had a ton of work to do. So let's go ahead and drill into Brock's uh, use environment here to get to work on all those approvals he had. So as uh, Brock's environment comes up here, he just got back from lunch and he's blindsided with all the approvals he has to do. I'm just kidding. They came in last night, so he's fully aware. Uh, but he's also updated with that flag service invoice over there that it's been rejected. And the reason why he's up to date with that is because he's the second approver in that queue. So he can keep track of things that are coming down the pipeline as well. But here in the middle, you can start drilling into particular invoices. Let's just use this Granger invoice um, as an example. This Granger invoice, we'll see Mario's comment there, we'll see the payment comment, and you'll notice all this is grayed out. Well, this is because the way we have our system designed is that the approvers don't have editing capabilities. Now, if you want to configure that into having your approvers have editing capabilities, that's completely fine. It's completely configurable into the way you need your organization set up. But let's say uh, Barack here wants to look a little bit closer on the allocations that uh, were uh, put into this. So you can look at the allocation itself, cross-reference the image here, and he can even look into a full historical data of this invoice. And this is great for audits because this full audit history is stored within for seven years into our system as well, and it tracks every single little thing. When the invoice was brought in, who touched it first, what was changed, when it was approved, when it was exported, etc. So that full allocation there is 100% uh, at your fingertips. But since we've uh, known this is a PO, good to go, it's going to approve this one through and it'll go on to that next step, who is our payment agent or treasurer, Angela.
and you see that she wears multiple hats in this as well. Now let's say that Barack gets back from lunch, he sees all that, these approvals he needs to do from his home screen, and he actually uh, wants to take care of some bulk approvals. So let's go up here to the top here, it says nine documents to approve, click into this, and you'll see that a lot of these uh, particular invoices are under $100. So let's say that we want to just go ahead and select everything under $100 and do a bulk approval. Select everything under $100, hit approve down the bottom right, and it'll do a bulk approval. Now, of course, that bulk approval is going to be tracked in that audit history. So for whatever reason, something is wrong, then you're still going to be held liable to that. So some of our clients like to deactivate that particular bulk approval uh, parameter there, which was totally fine. You can do that. So with that, we'll go ahead and um, move on to Angela, because you can see Angela has some payments to do. Now, of course, after the final approval, if you're doing payments without of your ERP, then after that final approval, it's just gonna post it directly into your ERP, and you won't have this particular payment stage to, to handle. But let's go back to Angela. And while we're in Angela's tab here, we'll, see, we'll show you how easy it is to process payments within USE. So Angela comes into her queue. She can drill into individual invoices, of course. This is where we're gonna see the actual amount to be a, play, a pay or applied. We can short pay this or break it up into different payment stages, completely dependent on how you guys wanna handle this particular invoice. We can change the default payment method here. We can, of course, change any kind of posting date, uh, payment comments, etc. But if we're ready to submit this one, we're going to submit it along to its next process. And that's going to kick off to that payment partner process via ACH, digital check, paper check, virtual card, however you guys have that particular vendor code set up or vendor information set up, and it'll bring up your next invoice. Now you can also, of course, do the uh, bulk payment approvals as well, just by clicking the top here. And we can, again, select all. Let's say um, we just want to go ahead and process all these different payments. We hit pay, we'll process those payments through, and it'll update your ERP with the payment information. Now, in bringing things in for a landing, we're going to go back to Mario. We're going to fix that rejected invoice and wrap up with some quick search functionality as well as custom reports that we can pull. Hope I'm not losing anybody here. <laughs> so with uh, us back in Mario's environment, he just got back uh, from playing around a golf. I know that doesn't happen um, at all. Oh, I went into Angela, excuse me. Let me get back into Mario here. Must have not clicked on his name. Because, I know you guys never get time off in, the, you know, in this. That's why we're looking to expedite this process. So hopefully we can give you some time off. That's our, that's our main goal. <laughs> so Mario gets back. Uh, he sees that that rejected invoice is here. You can drill into that rejected invoice. See the comment from uh, Hillary here that says it needs to be operating expense two. Hit period there. Change that to the operating expense two and resubmit. And we can even update this automatic assignment. So that way next time flag service comes through, it'll be updated to now operating expense two rather than operating expense three. Let's go ahead and confirm that out and it'll shoot off to Hillary. Now, let's say Mario gets, I don't know, a call uh, or he gets asked a question by a supervisor. He's like, hey, who is that person, that vendor that we, uh, that we always do business with of that's out of Ohio? And Mario's like, I have no idea. But if we go up here to what we call a Google Lite search bar or the quick search field, we type in Ohio, we can run a search on that and it pulls up this vendor, Toledo Optical. Now, why did it pull up this vendor? Is because on the invoice itself, all the way down at the bottom of this invoice in very tiny writing is the word Ohio. So this is a great way to do quick searches for keywords that are on invoices. So let's say that we're looking for the person we uh, order drums from. I type in drum, it pulls up General Petroleum. The reason why is because in the item description, the word drum is there. We can do quick searches for invoice numbers, um, addresses, uh, contact names, invoice dates, 
et cetera. So this is a great way to keep all your invoices at your fingertips for those particular uh, vendor calls that are coming in. It's no more rummaging around, you know, different filing cabinets. It's all just in quick searches. Now let's say we want to get more in depth with reporting. Well, down here to the bottom right, we have our search field. If we hit this search, it'll pull up customized reporting, and you can customize this report based off of any type of criteria you see here. Based on all that criteria that you select, you can start drilling down into being specific on what you're looking for. So just to keep everything really high level, let's just say we want to look at everything that was captured today. Pretty simple search. We'll search that and it'll pull up all those invoices that were uploaded today. It'll show you exactly what status they're in, who the current owner is in, any kind of due date associated with them. All these eyes are actually little notes that have been attached to the, to the uh, particular invoice. And also, if we hit this plus button on the left, it'll show the allocations. We can export this out to any kind of file format we see fit. So if we need to create some kind of like Tableau report or something for management, then we can create that uh, form and we can include those accounting details or not. My favorite part of the search feature is once we build out a search we like, you can save it, name it, and even put it to the home page. So then it's just a click away the next time you need that particular report. So maybe you need a report that says, hey, I want to see everything that is due this week. Well, then you can pull that report and it'll give you all the due dates that are due this week. Hey, I want to see um, which vendor I have the uh, best price on a drum for. You can pull a report based on all the different vendors. They have keyword drum in the item description and it'll pull up those, all the invoices. So that way you can uh, price compare. So this is just a great way to keep visibility and really make yourselves powerful as a organization to drive down uh, vendor cost as well as and heighten those vendor relationships. So I wanted to try to wrap this up in 45 minutes to give 15 minutes back in your day. Looks like I hit right on target, maybe a couple minutes over. So that's my apologies. Um, but Kate, as I was rolling through this, were there any kind of questions that popped up on the chat feature? Sorry about that, I was on mute. No, there's no questions at this time. Perfect. Hey, no questions are sometimes the best. And that's re that means that everything was clear and precise. And with our system being as simple as it is, it is pretty simplistic to follow, uh, even though it's very, very powerful. So uh, if you guys want, I can give you a little sneak peek into just our intact relationship and how uh, data flows over into intact if you'd like, Kate. Yeah, we can definitely do that. That's always good. Perfect. So let me go ahead and uh, log out here. I will get into our intact environment. And I know this is going to look very familiar for a lot of you guys because you're in this every single day. So let me log in and come to our homepage. Now to set up or integrate use into intact is as simple as adding a web service user. Uh, after that web service user is enabled, then we're going to be able to feed in all that information over from your particular uh, intact environment to use. But in this bill section, which will look very familiar, we can see that we have a list of bills, of course. If we go into view this Northeast uh, trailer service here. We'll see all those different header fields that you're typically filling out right now. All these header fields are going to be mapped to that of use. And remember, it's going to automatically be populated for you. After that final approval, all these fields and uh, posted invoice are going to just show up instantaneously within your bill section. So there's no like manual export that you have to do. It's an instantaneous sync from use to intact right when you get done hitting that approve button. Now, along with this sync, we're going to push an image of that invoice directly over into your attachments. So that way, if you're uh, ever reviewing information within intact, you have that invoice image right there. And if you ever need to get back to use to look even further, maybe into an audit history for this uh, particular invoice, the use URL is here and it'll take you directly back into the use environment. Once you log into that use environment, it'll pop up that document and then you can start looking into the audit history as well as uh, any other information that you need. 
in our intact environment, you will also notice that it has different types of header fields in here, like a, a intact geo posting date, there's intact keys, there's even payment remittance data that can be uh, pulled back over from intact after payment has been uh, successfully made. So that way both systems are kept up to date with those paid invoices. Now, along with that, of course, the GL information is also going to be pushed over as well as synced over. And then here's actually that allocation uh, subject I was talking about. So if you do have those particular vendors that need to be uh, allocated out based on percentages or dollar amounts, what, it, what have you, we can uh, pull over those allocation types as well. So crash course of use. I hope everybody had a lot of fun. And if there is uh, no more questions, I know I gave you 10 minutes back in your day and hopefully you utilize that 10 minutes to go ahead and reach out to Kate and let them know that you are interested in exploring further with use. Kate, back There's to you. There's no questions. All right, well, thank you so much, Casey. We, I enjoyed it. I always enjoy your presentations. So um, I will be touching base and this has been recorded so there's definitely uh, some people who will be getting this as well so thank you everyone who attended and if you have any questions please reach out to me and i can get you in touch with casey and the used team thank you thank you guys have a great day